Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is all about knitwear. I will start with talking about my favorite knitwear brands. I will then share a couple of things with you that I do to take care of my knitwear. And last but not least, I will give you some hopefully very, very useful information about how to spot high quality knitwear and also a little bit of information to understand what actually differentiates a cheap piece of knitwear and a great piece of knitwear. So I hope that you will enjoy that. If you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Evelyn, this is The Geek Is Chic, and on this channel we are talking about luxury, designer, high-end fashion or just fashion in general that is worth investing in. Also two things that might be of interest for you. The first thing is I'm currently in the planning of my first Q&A. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below or just follow me on Instagram and ask me there. I am basically collecting all of your questions for that Q&A video that I will put online here on YouTube in within the next couple of weeks. And the second news is that I am also in the process of planning my very first giveaway. So make sure to subscribe to hit that notification bell so that you get informed as soon as my giveaway takes place. Spoiler alert, it will be by Dior. So having that out of the way, let's dive right into my favorite knitwear designers. Let's start with designer number one, which is also what I'm wearing right now. I already talked about this brand a couple of times and it is probably the smallest and most local brand out of my whole selection that I have here for you today. The brand that this sweater is by is called Studio 163. It's actually a brand by a dear friend of mine. She is located in Munich. She has a boutique there and she also has an online shop and she basically designs these pieces all by her own and she partnered up with a production place in Mongolia which is also the place where you basically get the best cashmere from and it is also a very very small production um, place there and basically she does the design and in Mongolia the um, items get produced and done and that's it there are no other middlemen no other you know marketing firms anything like that in between this process which makes it very, very sustainable. And also her Kashmir is very responsibly, responsibly sourced. So the quality of her Kashmir is absolutely amazing. By the way, this is obviously not sponsored. I mean, I'm not there yet. I already have a couple of items and I am happy with all of them. She really knows how to create knitwear that is contemporary, modern, stylish and just perfect for, you know, a younger target audience like people like us basically that love to be cozy, love a piece of high quality cashmere but that maybe along the way are a little disappointed by the big like random brands or like your typical cashmere brands that sometimes get a little bit you know, maybe too conservative, too classic, too boring within their designs. So she really, really gets how to spice things up when it comes to cashmere, keep it super high quality, keep it also sustainable, which is a great thing to do, obviously. And yeah, I cannot recommend her enough. I love what she does. Brand number two is Vince. I know I talked about them before as well and I showed you this particular sweater a million times. I mean, if you watch my videos here or if you follow me over on Instagram, you have seen the sweater everywhere. And I have to say, I absolutely love it. I actually first saw this jumper on Lydia Elise Millen. She got it, I think a year ago or something. And I went on a hunt, on a mad hunt to, oh, sorry, in case you hear that, this is actually my little companion for today. Come on here. Come on. Yeah. yeah, that's Chester. And uh, he's the dog of my brother's girlfriend and he basically lives here. So we all love him very much. And it might be the case that he throws toys at me and wants me to play with him. So sorry for that. But usually you guys always enjoy a pet around me so yeah that's that's him let's go back to the knitwear sorry so yes i have been owning this beautiful sweater for a year now i think and i am very very happy with it it is also 100 percent cashmere it is super super soft it is so cozy i also love the cut it is quite the boxy short cut but then the sleeves have this beautiful bell shape to them it is 
kind of similar to the one that I'm wearing today, but the design on this one here is much more dramatic when it comes to the sleeves. Whereas on this beige sweater here by Vince, the belt sleeves are just a little more subtle and you also have this half turtleneck, obviously. So yeah, I really, really love how this particular sweater holds up. I'm very pleased with the quality. I think Vince is also one of those brands that creates beautiful modern contemporary cashmere or knitwear in general. And I also think that their prices for what you get are totally appropriate. Another brand that I appreciate a lot for their overall design approach, but especially for the knitwear, is Joseph. I've been owning this particular um, jumper dress by Joseph. Did you hear that? So this is a jumper dress that I honestly wear as a sweater, not so much as a dress, but I love how long it is, how oversized it is. I absolutely love this huge turtleneck that it has. So you can fold it over two times or you can just, you know, wear it as it is. Whereas folding it in a, you know, classic traditional way is of course more of a classic approach to wearing it and I love it. So this jumper dress by Joseph is actually not made of cashmere, it's just like regular wool, which is uh, by sheep and not by the cashmere goat. But I am still very, very pleased with it. It is not as soft and extremely, extremely fluffy as a cashmere sweater would be. And it certainly does pull a little bit more, but that's just the nature of the material. But still the fabrication, the way how it is sewn together, um, the cut, everything is amazing. It holds its shape amazingly, even though it is a very heavy and like quite large and long piece. So yeah, I'm still very, very happy with the quality. Joseph does these jumper dresses, I think every season. So last season, they had it in camel and in black, so I went for the black version, but I totally see myself getting more of these because they are just brilliant and I literally live in this one at the moment. So yeah, I will try to find this exact one and of course if I find anything similar or a different color by Joseph, I will link it down below as well. Last but not least, this is also the most affordable but one of the most amazing items that I have. This is again cashmere and that is my very classic black turtleneck by Eric Bombard. So this is a French brand. Joseph and Vince are American brands. This is a German brand. <clears throat> Eric Bombard is probably one of the most traditional knitwear or cashmere brands. They specialize in cashmere. They don't do anything else. And they are not the, you know, most modern, trendy and current brand. They actually have a boutique in my hometown here in Germany. And it's just one of those boutiques that I never went into or that I never considered, you know, visiting because I thought it was like an old ladies boutique or something. So they have a lot of classic stuff. And I ended up going there and finding this beautiful piece, which is actually from the men's collection because I am quite tall. I'm 1 meter 74. I'm not super tall, but you know, I'm not tall girl. <laughs> I wanted something that is a little bit longer from the cut. I didn't want a turtleneck that is too short or too cropped on me. I think this one did cost me around 200 euros, which is kind of in the middle spectrum when it comes to high quality cashmere, but compared to the other items that I've shown you, this is probably the cheapest or the most affordable. But it definitely, along with this one that I'm wearing here, it has the best quality of all of them. They are all amazing quality, but this and this I am the most impressed with. I have this for three years now, or even four years, and the shape, the pilling, there's like, there's not even any pilling whatsoever. Maybe there are like two pills all over this whole jumper at this point, and it is amazing. If you are on the search for a very classic, timeless cashmere piece that is still on the affordable side and that you will literally own forever, this is it. So moving on to point number two, which is how I care for my knitwear and for my cashmere. Because obviously a jumper can be the best quality, you can still destroy it within a season if you don't take care of it 
properly. What I do is not like out of this world. I think it's actually just a variety of very basic things that like my mother told me that I learned along the way. I made a couple of notes here so that I don't forget anything. So let's talk first about the storage and like how I wear my knitwear items. So after I wear this jumper, for example, for the whole day, I will in the evenings take it off and I will not immediately fold it and put it away into my closet. I would just spread it evenly over like a chair or something and let it breathe and let it ventilate a little bit if it's like if that's like the proper word for it so that it just gets a little bit of fresh air and the heat of my body like goes away before I actually put it in storage or like in my closet. And then just a couple of hours later or even the next day I will fold it very neatly the more complicated the cut of the sweater, the more thoroughly I will make sure that it's fold evenly and I will put it away. So for example, with this one here, I will not just like, you know, fold it in my arms and throw it into my wardrobe. I will just like spread it on the bed and then I will really technically fold it so that, you know, I don't have any creasing in it or anything like that so that when I will put it on the next time, everything is, you know, nice, neat and creaseless. Another thing is lavender. So during the past years, my love for lavender has become bigger and bigger and I just love those little cute pouches or like the paper that you can buy that you can just, you know, stuff in between your knitwear, within your wardrobe, within your closet to make sure that moths stay away. Moths do eat animal fibers. Wool, cashmere, all of these things are animal fibers. They are basically like our hair, so they eat that. And I actually lost quite a couple of amazing, beautiful wool items years ago when I did not take care properly um, of my knitwear. So these days I really have a lot of lavender laying around and especially when it comes to summer because I do, you know, change up my wardrobe and I basically put all of my knitwear of my like thick jumpers up in the top level of my closet every like spring summer when I don't need them anymore so that I can, so that I can make space for my summer items. So especially when I know that my jumpers will sit on the top level of my closet for the next, I don't know, six months or something, I will make sure that I will insert like layers of lavender paper or those little pouches that you can buy as well between every sweater to make sure that those little moths stay away from my beloved cashmere. Oh, PS, the same goes for silk because silk is also a animal fiber and they eat that as well. Another thing that I do is I do not wash my cashmere or my knitwear like after every wear or something. I don't treat it like a t-shirt or something that is made of cotton that is very, very carefree. Um, because that would destroy the item. So I basically only wash it properly when the piece actually needs washing, like, you know, when it's not fresh anymore. So when I wash my items myself, I can throw them into my washing machine because my washing machine has a specific program for wool, which is called hand wash, no trembling or tumbling whatsoever. Or if you don't have it, you have to do it with your hands manually. Once the, you know, washing process is done, I will pull it out of the machine. So I will wring it with my hands. After that, I will lay it all over like a huge towel and then I will roll up the towel and then I will again make sure that any excess water is like gone. So after that, I will spread it on again, another dry towel on like a flat surface, like, you know, it can be the floor, it can be basically anything. And then I just let it dry. And another thing that is very, very important is that when I lay it down on the floor, I will make sure that it is laid in a, you know, in the final shape that the knit is supposed to be. So I just don't like throw it on the floor or anything. I will actually make sure that it lays neatly and correctly because again, it's an animal hair. If I lay it down in its wet state in a weird way and there are any creases or something, these creases will stay. If you um, change the shape of the sweater when you dry it, this shape will stay once it's dry. You know, it's the same that goes for any like wet hairstyling, you know. I don't always have time to take, you know, to wash my knitwear myself. 
I quite often also take it to the dry cleaners. The only thing that is important though when you take it to the dry cleaners, to a, like a professional uh, cleaning service, <clears throat> what I always do, because I already had like bad experience with that, I always tell them when they, um, when I give them my pieces to not hang them on their little horrible thin metal hangers. I always tell them to just fold them or to hang them, you know, um, in a different way, like in a folded way, instead of, you know, in your typical hanger way. You know what I mean. Because, again, the weight of the knit, it can change the shape here. It basically deforms this line here. So you will, again, be left with, you know, weird little shapes or like things that like poke out and that are not supposed to be there when it is not hanged or like folded properly. Okay, let's move on to point number three. And that is a little bit of, you know, technical background to help you guys to be able to see if something is great quality or if something is of poor quality. So obviously this gets a little bit technical, but I will try to make it as simple and useful for you as possible. So I do have like good basic knowledge of garments, of fibers and fabrics. However, to give you the best and highest quality of information, I also consulted with a friend of mine who's actually a fashion designer. So she knows everything about how pieces get, you know, sewn together, about the process, about the fabrication, and of course about the fibers itself or themselves. So here you go. Point number one is of course the fact that it all comes down to the quality of the fiber. As I said before, wool is like our hair. It is a animal fiber. So there are certain things that contribute to a fiber being high quality or poor quality. For example, the stress level of the animal, the nutrition of the animal. Quality also depends on which body part it comes from you know from the goat or from the sheep if it's like the belly or if it's the if it's the legs or if it's the back you know those different areas get different exposure to for example nature so they have different texture and a different quality and then of course hair itself doesn't always have the same quality right so for example you can cut off a piece of hair like here and it will be super long and with a long piece of hair of fiber you can make a very high quality piece of knitwear because it is long and that makes it sturdy but you can also make a piece of knitwear from you know breakage from things that I cut off because it was like split it was low quality I didn't want it anymore you can make a jumper out of that but you know the quality of a piece of short and low quality like rest fiber that wasn't good enough for something else you know what i mean it won't provide you with the same quality output as like a piece of long smooth fiber so a sweater that is made out of a very short fiber of a low quality fiber will for example pull extremely easily and it all and it will also rip extremely easily so a simple thing that you can do to test if uh, the fiber itself is high or low quality you can basically take a piece of knitwear and just rub it in your hands and if you will immediately see pilling or any irregulations within the knit this is a strong indicator for low quality. So as I said, there are many other very high quality fabrics that still tend to peel or to pill. So of course, a cashmere sweater like this also has a little bit of pilling, but it doesn't appear immediately. And if I take a look at the fabric itself, it is still very sturdy, it is very regular. And you know, if I just like pull it, and if I pull it like that, or even if I pull it here like that, nothing happens it just stretches and goes right back to its you know, like usual shape whereas if you would have a very poor short fibered piece of knitwear you would immediately see that you know there's pilling going on and that there are fibers sticking out and that you could basically just rip it apart with your fingers then another indicator for you to see if a piece is made and fabricated in a high quality manner or in a low standard are the following tips 
So there are different ways to create a knitwear jumper. One of the cheapest ways is the cut and sew process. This process you just have like you know your material, meters and meters of material like a blanket. You just cut it with a laser within the shape that you want it. And then afterwards when you sew it together you interlock it. So a interlock stitch looks like that. And this process is a very cheap and low quality process to put together knitwear. The more sophisticated process is the fully fashioned or the fully fashion process. So if you have a fully fashion made piece of knitwear, it is made differently and this way requires more expensive machines and also workers that are more experienced and have a deeper knowledge of knitwear. So this also contributes to the price, right? In a fully fashion process, you don't have like a huge blanket that is cut, just like any t-shirt, but instead you actually have machines that already knit the individual pieces that will later be sewn together to the sweater if that makes any sense. Also the way that these pieces are then sewn together in the fully fashion way is called linked. And when you link two pieces of knitwear together that creates a different kind of stitching which looks like that. Another indicator to see if something is made full fashion and linked um, is also this little pattern along the lines that you can see. I will also insert a more detailed picture of that. So the full fashion way, as I said, is just the more high quality approach. It is more time intensive and that requires a higher state of expertise when you actually create a piece of knitwear. The whole quality, the longevity and the comfort when wearing a piece of knitwear is higher when you create something within like with this kind of process. Also, what is a pro and what makes this process actually more sustainable than, you know, the cut to soup process is the fact that if you, make, if you make something fully fashion, which means that you actually already knit something into the shape that it has to be before you put each pieces together to the, you know, final product, you don't have any material waste. If you treat knitwear just like any other, you know, jersey fabric and you just cut it, you will always have rests of fabric like pieces that you cannot use for anything else and that is basically trash, it's waste and just to keep that in mind. So of course there are many many more ways to determine whether something is high or poor quality but I think this all gives you kind of an idea and some very easy ways to see it as a consumer and kind of understand why you know a piece of fast fashion cashmere will never be able to have the same quality as something by you know a more sophisticated cashmere brand and that you know the reason for something being expensive is not just always branding and marketing of course it is with many brands but it also often comes due to the fact that you know these pieces are fabricated and sourced in a very different way. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, if anything was confusing, maybe I also confused the terms in between a little bit. Sorry if I did that. Um, just leave me a comment below and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. And if I cannot answer them on my own, I will be more than happy to ask my dear friend fashion designer person again to you know help me out with a little bit of extra knowledge thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye